Hi, this is Jennifer from Sing to Kids, and I thought it might be helpful for uh, those of you who are in that kind of reactive mode, trying to create content for your students uh, using Google Classroom to give you some just quick overview of what that might look like and how to set things up. And I thought the very first thing we all need to know is how to set up a Google Classroom. So right now you can see I'm already in my Google Classroom. I can see the classes that I have populated. If you've never done this before, you're logged into your Google account. And if you see the little waffle in the upper right hand corner, you're going to click on that and you'll see an icon that says classroom. If you don't see it, scroll down until you see it. You can click on it and move it around. So if you want to have that up higher in your menu, you're welcome to do that. But when you click on that, all that happens is that screen that you just saw is populated. Right next to your waffle is a plus sign, and that's where you're going to create your class. Now, one of the things I'd really like you to think about is if you're new to all of this, you might start with the question of how do I want to organize my class? Do I want to have one Google Classroom for the entire fifth grade, or do I want to have one Google Classroom for each teacher in that grade level? So, for instance, I have a fifth grade um, Google Classroom for each one of my uh, classroom teachers in fifth grade, fourth grade, and third grade. That's something we had established prior to uh, all of this that's going on in the world. And so uh, the the neat thing about that is I can kind of keep that, that group private and have conversations within Google Classroom with my students. Um, the challenging thing is that when I create assignments, I have to go in and create the assignment into every single classroom. And uh, having one for just one grade level, then you could just go in and do the assignment for that grade level, which makes things a little bit easier. Uh, the other thing you might consider is that if you uh, do not have Google Classroom set up, but may, perhaps your classroom teacher has it set up, you might ask to become an admin on their page. And the lovely thing about that is that you can go in and create assignments under a topic on their page without having to get kids to come to your own Google Classroom. And I have done that with my second grade teachers down here so that I can go in and push information to them and give assignments through their pages. And uh, it just makes life a little bit easier because those little ones don't need three and four Google Classrooms to go in and kind of sort through information and assignments and things like that. Having it all in one central location, both for the students and the parents, and I'm a parent, I'm telling you my child has four Google Classrooms that he has to keep track of, it's too much. He's a third grader, it's too much. So uh, doing it that way is also a really nice thing, just asking that classroom teacher if you can be an admin and just add in your assignment each week is a nice thing to do. But if you're going to set your Google Classroom, you're going to hit this plus sign up at the top and you'll see that you can join a class. So you can go and request to join a classroom in your building or you're going to create a class. So we're going to create a class today. And the first thing that comes up you see is the class name. So you have to have some kind of name. So I might put Miss Bailey's, um, we'll say, former students. Maybe I'm going to do an enrichment for ukulele and I'm going to invite students that are both uh, in my classroom now and maybe that have gone on to sixth and seventh grade. So uh, I'm going to click the create button and it's populating this class for me as we speak. And in just a moment, it's going to pop up and you'll see right here, there's a class code. Now, the lovely thing about the class code is you can email that out to your entire uh, a student or parent population and ask them to come join this classroom. You can also manually add students to the class if you'd like as well. You can see here that for whatever reason, it's uh, populated a hairstyling theme. And because I'm a music teacher, I don't want that. So I can choose to select a theme or upload a photo of my own. If I click select a theme, you'll see that there are lots of different options. I'm going to go to the arts and scroll and I see, oh, look, at there's a little music one here. So I'll click that one and select class theme. And then suddenly it becomes something that I want. If I had a, a photo that I really wanted to use, then I could put that in there as well. So this is the stream. This is where all the information is posted from you, from your students. It just shows the, the different things that have happened 
uh, in your Google Classroom. But the first place we really need to look at is people. So because we want people, what's the point of having a Google, Google Classroom if you don't have students in it? So again, there's two ways you can get students into the class. You can send out the code to parents and students and ask them to join. The other thing you can do is you can populate the list by typing in a name. Now I'm not going to type in names because student names will, will populate and I'm not going to, I don't want to violate any privacy uh, with students. But if I went ahead and typed in names, then student names would pop up from my school district and I could select that student's name that goes to my school or is in that particular grade level and add them into uh, the Google Classroom. And so I typically do that just because then I know every child is in the Google Classroom. Truth be told, it takes about three to four minutes to do a class list of students. It's not a hard process to do whatsoever. And that way I know every child is added. Whether or not every child participates using Google Classroom is another thing, but I know that they've been added to the class. We're going to go to classroom next. If you want to add work to your assign work to your students, this is where that is going to happen under the classwork tab. We're going to hit create. And then it gives me a variety of options. I can do an assignment, a quiz, a question, post materials. If I have maybe a recorder book that I created a PDF of, I could post that there. I can also create topics in here. So I wanna show you really quick, what does it look like if I create an assignment? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have to put a title. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, music enrichment for April 7th. And if I have instructions, I'm going to go ahead and put those here. Uh, please take a moment to complete this music enrichment uh, at home. Miss you. Uh, so because I haven't seen my students in almost what it's been over three and a half weeks. Now, here's the thing. If I want to add an assignment, this is where I'm going to do it. So I've just created, this is the title. Here are the instructions. Here's where I'm going to put things. The most important thing is anything you want to assign it in your Google Classroom should be part of your Google Drive. So I'm going to click Add. And then I have options. I can go right to my Google Drive. I can do a link to a website. I can add a file or I can grab something from YouTube. Now, if I'm grabbing something from Google Drive, I just want to show you really quick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my drive. Sorry, everything's taking a little bit longer. Here's music at home. This is where I'm kind of organizing all of my files for my students so that I know where everything is. And we're going to pull up a third grade one. And this is week three, April 6th. And then here's a little music reflection uh, thing that I got from one of my good friends, Angie Kelton from I Heart Teaching Music. And uh, she has made this available on multiple Facebook groups where you can grab the link and uh, get a copy of it. It's been a lifesaver for me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that now because this is my kind of exit ticket with students. It's the way I know that they're doing the work. They have to fill it out and give me some feedback. So I'm going to click add. But here's what I want you to know. Because I'm assigning this and I want to get feedback from every single student in my classroom, you see down here it says students can view file. That's fine, but then they can't really do the work of what I want them to do. So I'm going to click down here and it says students can edit. I really don't want them to edit that file. I want them to each have their own copy. So do you see where it says make a copy for each student? I'm going to click on that because I want them to each have their own copy that they can mark up, give feedback, write to me. So if you're using any of my Google um, uh, resources from Teachers Pay Teachers, this is how you assign those to students. So every student has their own copy of the uh, activity to use in their uh, music learning. So if you're using Rhythm Rabbits or Spring Rhythms, whatever those things are, you're going to go in here and make a copy for each student. Now, there were other things I wanted to add to the folder, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But if I'm going to assign something for each student, I have to do it 
by itself. So it has to be a standalone ad. And then I have to make a copy for each student. If I go back here and I want to grab more things out of that folder, I'm going to click on my drive again. I'm going to go back to that third grade folder. And you can see that here I had a little PDF that I wanted to do, and I had a little movie for them to watch. This particular movie I have in my Google Drive. If I had it as a YouTube clip, I could grab it and, and do that too. But if I hold the Shift button and press down these two files, now I can add both of those files at the same time. And uh, again, I can go in and say I want them to view it or I want to make a copy or what have you. So uh, these are things I just want them to be able to view, not manipulate or do anything. Uh, in my district right now, we're doing enrichment or reteaching concepts, so we're not doing grades. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and make it an ungraded assignment. The due date, I would kind of like them to have it done by the end of the week, so I'm going to put the 10th as a due date. The topic. Here's where I'm going to create a topic, and this is where I want you to know if you're working in your classroom teacher's Google Classroom, this is where I might go put music or music art, boy, you think I could spell that, music art and PE if you're doing like a specials tab, or if I'm doing um, just a regular thing like this is my distance learning, so uh, I will put that under that topic. Um, and when I'm all done, I'm going to go ahead and click Assign. And you can see it's assigning this and we'll give it just one more moment. And it's taking forever, but there is the assignment. And when I click on it, then the kids can see here are the directions. Here's the uh, copy for the students, the, the PDF that they can do with their own rhythms. And I can see how many of how many kids have it's been assigned to and how many kids have turned it in. OK, now I just want to take you into really quick a couple other things so you can see what this looks like here is one of my third grade classes and i'm going to go into their classwork here's their assignment for the week you can see that it was assigned to 19 kids only one child has turned it in no big deal it's tuesday uh, i wanted to show you really quick this is a fourth grade class and the neat thing about the fourth grade class is again this was in a, a class a google classroom that was already established so you can see i have all of their recorder movies when we started recorder um, in december here's links to all of their things that we do online here are some really cool recorder performances so that's where the topics come in handy so they they can see like if, if you're using this throughout the year where you can say like here are your drumming assignments here are the resources for recorder here are the resources for ukulele here are the distance learning assignments so having topics is a really great way to keep things organized in your classroom all right friends i hope that was a help to you and and got you started uh, on this journey of using google classroom please you know write me a comment if you have any questions i'd be happy to help and um i would be happy to share any uh hints or things that i've been doing with my students i think that would be it's just one of those times where we have to uh do our best to help one another and lift one another up because we are all teaching in uh, you know, new territories right now and, and trying to flip our classrooms and reach every child that we can possibly reach and, and maintain our own uh, sanity and, and mental health right now and with our own families. And so anything we can do to help one another is just, uh, is just appreciated. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.